we do have cash it, it comes with strings attached but we do have the cash so we can buy in the support that we believe is most necessary we don't have to make do with what we can find we can go for the very best um, we have brains we have 10 institutions worth of brains behind us we can actually pull together all of the resources and the specialists that we know and we can ask them what they can deliver for us based on what we want and we can, we can get the very best we can. Um, in terms of us, the experts connected to the brains, they are experts. We can get in the best people for the job. Um, in terms of the tips, we evaluate it all the time, we evaluate everything and because we evaluate everything, it's evolved um, boot camp this year, we added two new sessions and an extra half day to the boot camp we did last year based solely on the feedback from the delegates and the deliverers um, over the last two years. Um, and what it does do, it takes them away from everyday life. I think that's the most important thing that's come out of our boot camps. Without exception, every year the evaluations have come back. At the beginning, when they know it's in a remote location and they've got to stay over, they're thinking, oh my God, what am I going to do with my business? It's, you know, it's four days away. But without exception, they all think it's great because it allows them to go away from real life and concentrate on what they need to do on their business. Um, we've got 10 partners, but one thing that we wanted to concentrate on in terms of GE is how we manage those partners. And I think our, it's not necessarily a secret, but what makes it work for us is we have a central project team. Um, I'm the project manager of it, and apart from the boot camp, I don't actually do any delivery with the students. That's down to the specialist business advisors within each of the institutions. So it's my responsibility to make sure that they have the money um, that enables them to deliver the support to the students, whether that be by paying their wages or giving them the bursaries that they need. Um, but we have our fingers in all of these pies. So we have, we have a steering group which enables us to future gaze, to see where things are going, um, to be able to review what we've done right and wrong, to give us a pathway for the future. Um, our partnership meetings and communications, we're, we are in constant contact with our partnership. Some of them like it, some of them don't. Um, but we try and keep in constant contact with them all of the time so that they know what's going on in the institutions. Um, we have five monthly meetings, which are half days, and sometimes they can be contentious, sometimes they can be a lot of fun, but everybody is encouraged to exchange their best practice, what works for them, what doesn't, and they take it back to their own institutions and implement it. Um, the strategic and funding bodies, we, we were quite sure we were mentioned in the Wilson report as, um, as an example of good practice, um, and because we have a decent steering group that enables to push us up and through, and we have a wide open partnership, we can actually try and influence um, where funding comes from. And we also have um, specific <coughs> working groups. So for example, boot camp, a central project team will feed into the boot camp, but they won't be totally responsible for organising it. We have members of our partners that come in and help us organise that, as well as any awards or other events that we do. So everything that we do is centralised by a project team, but we try and encourage everybody that we can to come in. And that's how we work. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm here to represent the uh, what we call Dynamo Partnership, which is the Universities of Bournemouth, Southampton, Solent, Winchester, Portsmouth, and Southampton. We're all in the same region. We're an informal group who just like working together. Um, we started back in 2006 with a very, what I'd say, uh, classic boot camp model. We had a 24-hour, 50-pound challenge where the students just went out and made as much money as they could and then they had a few days to develop their own business ideas and pitch them to a panel at the end of the week. Um, this has constantly changed over the years. I think I was trying to work it out last night. I think we've had at least 25 different enterprise educators involved with it at some point, all of whom have brilliant ideas, and so it's constantly innovating. And from 2008, um, we've actually moved away from students developing their own business ideas and instead got businesses in to set challenges for them. So more of an, uh, an apprentice style approach. Uh, there's a number of reasons for that. One is because as universities, we all realized we had our own in-house support for business startup. So this was sort of duplicating the effort. And actually what we wanted to do was something with a slightly wider reach, which was all about enterprise skills development rather than specifically about uh, business startup. And we also had problems with 
uh, not having a level playing field with people developing their ideas, people working in groups, IP issues, things like that. So this is why we've kind of moved to a slightly different model. And also with funding changes, we've moved from doing four-day residentials down to some of our events are just one-day events. But actually, when we've evaluated the outcomes, it works just as well. So we were worried that there'd be a detrimental effect there, but so far that hasn't been. Um, I've been asked specifically to talk to you about um, external collaboration, so the other partners that we get in. So I've tried to map it out here, there's obviously all sorts of dotted lines between these areas, but this is the sort of simplest way I can put it. So you've got the funding side, so we're going to people for grants, uh, public sector, we've had, we've had grants from uh, city councils, county councils, Hampshire Economic Partnership, Business Link, as was. Um, so that's been really helpful. And then obviously getting the sponsors in as well. And we found the best way to do that is they quite like sponsoring prizes with their name on. Um, so that works really well. Um, also on what I sort of term the supplier side, we try and think really carefully about who we're working with. So wherever possible we use graduate startups from our own unis. So that might be designing a poster, designing t-shirts, any way we can get them involved. Um, and also social enterprises as well, so if we can, we get a social enterprise to do the catering, for example. So we're constantly surrounding the students by other startups that they can relate to. Um, we have used sort of uh, facilitators in the past, like the Working Knowledge Group, My First Million. Uh, we don't tend to do that anymore because we haven't got enough money, but, but it has worked in the past. The main thing I'm going to talk about is, is what I've termed the business input. Let's go on another one. Um, so the main thing we're looking for from businesses is challenges uh, that the students can do. And the, the thing we're looking for is something that the students can have really genuine input on and that the, that the companies will value. And that's quite difficult to get right, but we've had some really good ones in the past. Um, we also look for mentors and judges, and quite often we go through networking groups to get those. So we've got, at Winchester, we've got Wide Wessex, which is our business networking group through mental net, chamber of commerce, they're a really good way to get lots of people involved. One big can we did, we needed 30 mentors on hand, so that's quite a lot of people to recruit, um, but that worked really well. And then obviously getting speakers in as well, inspirational speakers who will quite often be startups. Um, I think, I mean, I'm sure everybody recruits speakers all the time, but we always find the ones who are just a few years ahead of where the students are now are the best because they can really relate to it. I think that's where I want to be in a few years' time. Uh, just to sort of touch on the benefits and, and challenges of this kind of collaboration, um, the students really love the real world input that you get from working with a real business, um, rather than working in a little bubble with something that's all a bit theoretical, they actually realise they have genuine input, and it's, it's all about confidence building really, if they come up with an idea, the business say, that's great, I might take that forward, they think, wow, I've actually got something useful to offer. Um, the apprentice style challenge is really good because it's something that, that they're familiar with. You know, they all watch it on the telly and quite often think, well, I'd love to have a go at that. And it doesn't rely on them having their own business idea, it, it has a slightly broader, broader reach. Uh, the challenges is obviously these are busy, busy people and uh, getting them to commit sort of one or two days out of their working life to come and work with the students is challenging. And quite often we started developing a challenge with a business and soon realised that they're just not going to have the time to do it. We have to sort of take a decision early on about whether or not that's going to be practical. I think particularly with judges, it's about um, setting their expectations of the students and making sure that they're not, you know, they're not like the dragons, they're not too hard on them. You know, quite often the students are working on an idea in two, three hours and they've got to be realistic about what they're going to come up with. And it, again, it's about the confidence building. We don't want anyone leaving. Uh, in a distressed state. Um, so my top tip would be um, really finding a, a topic or a challenge where, where the students have a relevant insight. One of the best ones we did with this, uh, was with Southern Comfort who uh, had struggled with doing responsible drinking campaigns and that's something that the students you know, really could come up with ideas that they really, really valued. Um, we did another one last year, there's some details on the handout with the Empty Shops Network, which was all about, we were in an empty shopping centre, and we said to them, what social enterprise uses, could you come up with all these empty units? And that was brilliant, that really stimulated them. And I think my top tip would be, when you work with a business on this and they're genuinely excited about doing it, when they're excited and they say, I wish I'd done something like this when I was a student, that's when you know it's going to work really well, because they're really on board and want to do it. Is it Okay, my name is Nigel Biggs, I'm the entrepreneur in residence at the University of Surrey, and we've been running, uh, I suppose, what everyone calls a boot camp, 
uh, the last 20 years. Except that we call it, and still call it, the Enterprise Summer Store. We'd started to call it Bootcamp a year ago, and there was a sort of uprising from various people saying, the brand's great, we understand what it is, please call it Enterprise Summer Store. So we've kept it like that. Um, this is for undergraduates mainly, but we get undergraduates, master's students, postgrads on it as well. Uh, and it's a collaboration between two universities that are 10 miles apart. So it's uh, a, a technical university, basically, is what Surrey's about, which is uh, what we see for engineers and business students, and with the University of Creative Arts down the road, which is for creative arts uh, people. This all came about because of the HEAT, the sort of the southern equivalent of uh, the UK. And it was a small project fund, and we did a day uh, of just a, a joint event to see what might happen. And it was really good. And so we rushed around, that was in the March six years ago. And uh, we said, let's do uh, a, a longer one. We managed to do a three day event uh, quite quickly. Uh, Taking the point earlier, you heard about somewhere remote. This isn't quite remote, it's somewhere different from the university. Farm Castle, which is absolutely a castle, uh, used to be the uh, the uh, head of bishopric uh, for uh, bishops of Winchester, um, and students have never been to an event like this, and it really makes a difference moving them somewhere, and it's residential uh, as well there. Uh, it's a three-day event. It's self-funded now. It was sort of a little mini project was being funded, uh, and then it's, it's actually quite uh, funded uh, by mostly by Surrey, um, and the UCA can't afford it. Um, the absolute difference in students is really important. We'll just move on. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, might go through all the words there, but these were the words that were written down six years ago. We've seen no reason to, to, to change them, which is all about encouraging innovation, challenge, and development of entrepreneurial skills and knowledge. It hasn't changed. The pictures of the various entrepreneurs we get in, uh, young and old, we take a, a, a broad go at it. Uh, people that have been on TV, done various, started something. The guy on the middle on the right, uh, who's now a barrister, but uh, he actually came on the course, I think on the first or the second one, uh, and has since then gone off and, and uh, he, he, he studied in, uh, in America, told, told wonderful stories of being run up by Ch someone in China uh, who'd seen his student website saying they could sell um, offer, oh, BDUs, old BDUs for recycling, and he got this call in the middle of the night about. Uh, uh, you, you supply me PDUs, computer, for China. And, uh, and he actually started a business from a, just because of this phone call in the middle of the night. But the point is, it was inspiring to the students because it was an absolute related story. Now, here was someone who had done a student project, and my God, he was running around running a business. It's more sensible now, he's running uh, being a Right, we'll just move on. Uh, the programme, very quickly, there's a handout on, your, uh, on the tables. Uh, what we do is, as it's residential, the very first part, the first day, is all about getting to know each other. We have rules. They all just turn up. We used to select who was going to be in which team. We don't do that anymore. We just set some rules when they arrive. Find people, three from Surrey, uh, three from UCA, different courses, different skills. I mean, and we they have to go and talk to people and settle into those, those teams. Um, we have entrepreneurial talks uh, through each day. Very importantly, in the last three years, we changed, instead of, we went through odd times trying to get businesses in with the, with the challenge. The problem we had was getting a challenge at the right level. It was interesting, said you had to be working to get the challenge right, but we didn't. But unless the teams can understand the challenge in about 10 minutes, uh, you're running into difficulty in how they can respond. So now, we have a theme. We take a local <coughs> organisation. Three years ago, it was the YMCA. Farm and Castle itself as a business, Farm and Museum as a business, and we use that as a theme. We get people from that organisation in just to introduce it on the first day, or in a couple of cases, we try to make it local enough that we can walk to it and they can see the organisation and see how it all works. And that's been very powerful uh, lately. So we get them going, we do sessions on creative thinking, usual sort of business initiation, but then they have two or three hour session across lunch into the afternoon to come up with some very early ideas both for social enterprise and commercial enterprise ideas for the organisation in question, which they present later on in the day. Um, by the end of the day, uh, they have dinner, a bit it was the first day and they will have to travel to it. Day two, as in this conference, is always the longest day. Um, 
and we do a bit more on sort of finance stuff, but it's the social enterprise. Okay? We focus on social enterprise, and I mean, I know running a social enterprise is hardly any different from running a commercial enterprise, it's that to make money, it's what you do with it, that's important. Um, but we, we deliberately split the two and say the social enterprise is not necessarily about making money itself, it's doing stuff, come up with ideas for that. The next day is the, uh, is the money. Um, so the day is broadly the same sort of idea. Uh, get people in, give them some training, get them some more ideas, and then they work together on building their presentations for the afternoon. Later in the afternoon, they do the presentation. Someone from Farmcast or whoever it is comes in to listen to his feedback um, on all of that. Then, because the dinner is a networking dinner, if you've got 25 or 30 students, as we have, we try and get 25 or 30 business people in in the evening for free dinner, and we give them some networking training so they can actually go and ask lots of questions and do things. And at the dinner, we sit business person, student, business person, student, business person, student, and move them around between each course. So they really are forced to network. And the process of the talk in the evening. The last day is sort of the same, but it's with commercial ideas, except the last three years we changed it a little bit. And at 10 o'clock in the morning, after the first talk and everything, we say, okay, you've been in your teams, you had an idea, you did the social enterprise stuff here yesterday, great, but you haven't really done any market research. And we say, it's 10 o'clock, you've got to half past one, which is about the time we go out into what was far, and we've run it in Guildford uh, this summer. Uh, go out, and you must interview, each team must interview at least 50 people uh, about your idea. Get feedback. Don't get out, you know, five or six people each, or whatever, it's not too bad. Um, you must do 50 people, and you've got the morning, and then you come back, get your presentation ready, both with your idea, a bit of finance and thinking, and the feedback and the lessons you've learned. Uh, we stay now present in the afternoon, and we give them a prize for the best one, stuff like that. So, as two institutions, that's been very good, didn't it pop on? So a couple of steps. As two institutions, that's been worked very well. We started to, to broaden it, our charging before we go on. We used to do it for free, but people didn't turn up. So then we started charging 50 for it, it wasn't too bad. And then we got to 95 pounds, which seems to work quite well for three days, because they're in hotels and all the rest of it works very well. Okay, one more, and we'll finish. Um, Challenge was funding, marketing, which we weren't good at within the universities. We widened it this year to some unemployed people and, um, as well, and that changes the nature of it, but gives the students access to uh, more mature adults. We found that has some good and some interesting and lots of good uh, ways to do it. I think that's a bad one more. And the benefits, well, glass blowers, meeting engineers, they've never done anything like that before, uh, and it's really good. So we can talk about the benefits and stuff. But, what I'd just like to do quite quickly is get a few thoughts and ideas coming to the table just to sort of summarise before we head off uh, in the direction of lunch. So, just ideally, just two or three sentences, if you can, to sort of capture some of the key points that have emerged uh, from your discussion. Would anyone like to kick us off? Um, so, we, we had. Um, Different groups of students and there's challenges of working with different groups of students. So it's, I mean, we have got lots of benefits and then you've got the challenge, which I guess is quite good. Um, so the, the benefits in summary are, um, and to coin uh, Nigel's phrase, is there's a magic meeting with the end of students from different faculties, different courses, sort of things that maybe they do, don't do very often in their school they're out so kind of So working with different groups of students and there is something magical about sort of doing that. Um, students um, can play to their strengths, so um, in, in, in cross-disciplinary teams you get students who may be good designers, students who may be good presenters, students who may be good writers and that sort of thing, so they can learn to sort of utilise the skills that they feel that they have strength, that they have a strength in and apply that to the sort of team situation. Um, there's an opportunity for sort of cross-fertilisation of ideas from these different disciplines. Um, and then another thing that we thought of uh, is this sort of recognition of maybe a, a skills deficit. So it's an opportunity maybe for students to sit around uh, and they maybe don't have this opportunity very often to sit and think, well actually, you know, maybe I'm not particularly strong in that area, but that doesn't really matter. 
you know, and, and that recognition that um, you know, an entrepreneurial team is important, and you don't have to bring everything yourself to the table. You can sort of draw constraints on others around you. And one challenge. One challenge. Um, I think uh, it, it was about how do you how do you engage a practical thing really, how do you engage a range of students from a broad range of disciplines. So sort of not just the business students type of effects. So trying to get other students from different factors and courses interested in this sort of thing. Thank you very much. And another group can to share their thoughts. Uh, well, one benefit as a benefit and challenge is even money. Okay. Yes, I benefits and um, challenges for external families and that sort of um, The benefit and the challenge is money. So we require money to run an event, but also money is a, a kind of um, incentive in the actual event. Um, I suppose getting volunteers, one of the benefits is, is <coughs> Getting volunteers from previous participants to come in and tell their story. You know, someone talked before about having people closely to the age or to the stage that they're going through in the business, and that was really good. And actually, it was quite easy to engage people who've been through the process and get them to come along and tell us about a benefit. Um, and again, things like using external collaborators, it, it, it brings the real world to them, so it's, it's less about classroom teaching, it's less about kind of. Um, it's different and it's credible. Yeah. You've got real people coming and telling real stories. Um, challenge? Challenge, um, I suppose making sure everyone's clear about the mutual benefits. So both the collaborators are, are, are absolutely clear about what they're going to get out of that. You don't want them just doing it for, for you know, altruism to a certain extent. You want them to, to really try and get to that. So as long as you're clear about that up front and they're clear, then, then it will be a successful collaboration. Uh, yeah, we were looking at the benefits and challenges of institutional collaboration. Um, the sort of main key benefits that we noted down is obviously the combined resources between all the uh, different institutions and um, sharing of best practice. Um, we also thought that obviously collaboration, um, you know, depending on the number of partners, uh, made things more open and you know, gain external sponsors in. And it can also open up other opportunities for collaboration. You know, have, like for example, um, graduate entrepreneurship group has got ten partners, but further down the line, four of those partners could maybe break off and do their own sort of collaboration. Um, and then challenges. And um, one of the main things was sort of different politics and obviously competition rivalry between the partners. Um, their variation in level of commitment between them. Um, logistics and venues, so getting everybody together in different times. That's some of the main challenges. Thank you. Can you? Ours is um, finance and funding uh, for what we do, and actually we're sort of at different ends of the spectrum, I think, in some areas, because a lot of us had regional development funding from the government, um, and that obviously went. Um, some people have gone on to ERDF funding, which is a with European um, development funding, which is a complete challenge in itself, um, mm -hmm. trying to use that funding and is a last resort funding really. Um, and um, so some, some of the institutions struggle with um, the actual institution buying into and giving funding towards what this is, so that is a, you know, a challenge. On the other area, uh, my own university, Leeds University, they're fully committed to the financing and funding of a um, business startup and what we do. So that's co-funded from all the faculties throughout the university. And also the alumni heavily invest back into what we're doing. So I run a program and it's completely funded by alumni funding. And it's promised for the next five years. So we've got... An interesting one to do, but my story is that every institution in this room is going to fund this in a slightly different way. Yeah. It's a slightly different mix to me. Yeah. A little bit works for me as well, but I have institutions going yeah. to get the that's um, right. So that's a really interesting thing so to make. So we've got different... Yeah. It's around the table, we've all got um, different challenges, and um, some of us got hive, some of us didn't get hive, which has had um, an effect on uh, what people can do. And sometimes people were expecting things to be 
taken out of a heart, like a rabbit's out of a magic heart, to produce business startups or investment within it. So we're at different ends, and so there's quite a lot of challenges really with what we're doing. Yeah. Education design, yeah, we kind of went initially in terms of looking and focusing on what the important question what's the output, what are you looking to achieve from this? So the, the two main outputs tend to be are you looking to achieve number of business startups from your student and graduate population, or are you looking to achieve more employable graduates through developing their enterprise, uh, entrepreneurial, or employability skills, whatever terminology you use in your institution. So that's the kind, of, the, the kind of crucial question about the education design. And once you get over that one, then you can start kind of scoping out, scoping out the boot camp and, and, and how it kind of runs. So we looked into things around what themes you might build your boot camps around, be it social enterprise or tech or, or kind of arts and social sciences. So if you need themes of like, do students pay for it or not? So is that a good way of kind of getting commitment and buy-in? Um, and then we've touched on some of the things that some of the speakers mentioned around how they made it work in, in terms of the design of the programme. Um, and there's not anything else we really want to kind of cover there. Um, we talked about the application process as well, and the crucial aspect of the application process. But again, it comes back to what you're trying to achieve. So you, there's no point in asking people their business ideas going into the detail, uh, business idea, if you're just trying to build a program to support entrepreneurial development. If you're trying to build a program to support business startup, then yes, you need to go into the details about the individual their drivers and values. So it really does depend on kind of seeing the program stand at the end of the night. What I think just to add to that, maybe that's a final note. Obviously, boot camps are part of a bigger landscape. They're, they're not the only thing we do. So we're all deploying them alongside a whole range of other activities that we have. And for, for some of us, we're running boot camps as a way of bringing people in, getting them interested in enterprise. Some of us are using them to, to really pick out and select the really likely businesses and accelerate those out to the end of the process. Some of us have used multiple boot camps for different groups at different points in the year to do all of those things. So it goes back to, to, to John's point there about what is it that you're trying to achieve and what are the best ways to kind of master the resources and the opportunities that you have to try and deliver something. Hopefully, um, if you've got something out of the session, I would encourage you to grab handouts and stuff that you've left. What we have tried to do is make sure that we've described the activities that we run as 20 uh, institutions on those handouts uh, rather than the labour. Uh, a description to your audience. Um, good luck with what you're doing. If you have any questions, please do come to any of us involved in the session. Thank you very much.